Hi, welcome to another episode of Youth Diary. A flawless exterior is not impossible, but it takes effort. It's not all about the fancy lotions and formulas. And to give us some tips, here we have Dr. Meera James with us. She's a cosmetic dermatologist from Cochin. Hello, doctor. Welcome to our show. Hi. Doctor, can you just tell us what are the common problems that's seen in youth? The youth commonly present with one most common is acne. So they come with the acne, its pigmentation, marks, scars and the sort. Then there is a lot of hair fall. That is previously we used to see hair fall in 40s but now a lot of youth come with hair fall. Then a lot of these young girls come with excess hair growth. Then they have these freckles and the sort of pigmentation they develop when exposed to sunlight. So these are the common things that I see among the youth. Okay. So, Dr. Will, will move to the questions. Hello, madam. My name is Nishak. I am studying MBA in SNGIST. I have no doubt, madam. Uh, the main uh, problem facing by the youth is early hair falling. What is the reason uh, behind this? He has asked about the hair fall, early hair fall. Yeah, that's what I, I was telling you earlier. That is, previously we used to see hair fall only in the 40s. But maybe now, due to the change in the lifestyle, the stress, or the dietary habits, or the people are traveling from different places, the change in the water that they use, we see a lot of people who come with loss of hair that okay. is in early 20s and the sort. No? And thing most important regarding that is whenever you start getting a hair fall you have to take treatment at the earliest so if you're taking a treatment within the first two years of the start of the hair fall you can get back all the hair that you have lost and another common thing that leads to hair fall is dandruff and dandruff is a condition which is commonly associated with one type of skin that is mainly oily skin okay. so it's a condition that can be never completely cured but we can keep it under control so when they have some kind of disease or when their sleep is not proper or when they have stress or when they are suffering from some kind of disease dandruff tends to increase and that leads to hair fall so for those people who have dandruff and that leading to hair fall when the dandruff is controlled automatically the hair fall also gets controlled but if it's due to some other reasons no? we have to give them specific treatments which includes multivitamins then there are lots of applications to use and that has to be done and within a short span of time they will get back the hair but they shouldn't be just stopping the treatment also one fine morning okay. should be tapering and stopping it then the improvement continues Doctor, what about these uh, hair oils that is available in our market there are a lot of hair oils yeah. that is available now the hair oils the thing is like most of these hair oils which are commercially available doesn't do anything okay. and many of them do contain something called minoxidil which is something we also use to treat it but in a lower concentration or something like that and some sometimes what happens is these hair oils if they are not used properly they can lead to folliculitis that is inflammation and infection of the hair follicles okay. and then can lead to further loss of hair okay. and another thing is like the hair oils are things which can increase dandruff because dandruff has always a fungus associated with it and this fungus grows well in oily media so when you are using some kind of oil you, know, you are actually giving a medium for the fungus to grow okay. so that increases that the dandruff as a culture media yeah culture media right. and that dandruff then gets exacerbated okay. so i would advise to not use oil for that okay uh we will move on to the next question yeah mm -hmm. My, my name is Sribu. I'm just studying MBA in SNGST. I have doubts uh, about my skin. After my shaving, uh, there's a reaction, so, something like a pimples. Is that a reaction of uh, shaving blight? So this is actually a condition which develops especially in people with curly hair. Okay. So when you're shaving very closely, what happens is the end becomes too sharp and this curly hair, no, it is supposed to come out through a certain pore on the skin. Okay. But since the end has become so sharp, it tends to poke in through other regions where it is not actually supposed to come out. Okay. So that leads to a reaction there that leads to pseudo folliculitis or a false follicular inflammation that appears to be like pimples. So the most important thing they have to do is never shave the hair closely. It's better to go for trimming because okay. this is a condition which cannot be treated completely because they tend to develop it whenever they shave it. So okay. just trim it very closely so that that condition can be avoided. 
Okay. So that's the thing. Okay. Uh, Doctor, is it okay to share uh, the uh, shaving razors or shaving blades? Yeah, the sh razors and the things are not the problem here. Here, okay. the nature of the hair is the problem. Okay. So whatever razor they use, it's a triple blade, double blade, that's not going to make okay. any difference. Okay. Or even if they change the shaving creams, the gel gels, forms, that's also not going to make the difference. The difference is that the hair being curly, it tends to poke in, in different regions leading to the folliculitis. So, don't shave it too closely, trim it. So, okay. That can be avoided. Okay. So, is there any creams or lotions that can be used for this kind of problems? No. Actually, like maybe uh, immediately after shaving, they can try using some antibiotic lotions. But that also, because it's not an infection okay. or a bacteria that is causing the problem. It's actually caused by the nature of the hair. And so that is actually is something yeah, genetically okay. linked. So nothing can be done okay, regarding right. it. So it's better for them to avoid close shaving and go for trimming. Trim. And that's a passion, not trimming. I know. Okay. <laughs> so we'll move to the next question, yeah. Doctor. Madam, my name is Girish Tias, studying in MBA. Uh, Madam, my diet was, uh, what is the reason for having early gray hair? Uh, due to any lack of protein, vitamins, Okay. Again, as I said, no. Most of these hair problems are now related to stress. Okay. The lifestyles have changed. The way the people take the things, everything has changed, and students they tend to move, like they are away from home. So all these factors can be a factor. It's never due to any nutritional deficiency. Very, very rarely, like there can be some genetically linked things. And sometimes it happens in families. Like okay, in some families there is a tendency to develop early grey. Other than that, like nutrition is not a factor. Okay. And early graying is one of the difficult things to treat also. Okay. So we try like giving them calcium pantothenate tablets, Paba tablets and all the things. And now there are some local applications also available. So it's always better to go for colouring. So that's the best thing that works. So, huh? so you mean to yeah. say that it's very difficult to treat? It's very difficult. One of the most difficult things to treat early graying. Okay. So doctor, we'll see the next question. Hello ma'am. I am Harsha Hemajandran studying MBA in SNGST. Uh, most of the uh, teenager girls facing the problem of dark circles. But how can we overcome it? Dark circles is also another common problem. So there are so many different causes for dark circles. One is it is commonly seen in some families, like families where there is an incidence of asthma, like allergies and the things, they tend to have these dark circles. That's actually a sign of this allergic tendency. Okay. Then when they use excessive like computer then they tend to develop dark circles and when there is eye strain that's another cause then due to like some people use this kind of eye cosmetics which also tend to stain the okay. eyes and then when there is a deprivation of sleep that is another factor then definitely stress is another factor which leads. So most often we see the dark circles not associated with a single cause, it may be due to so many causes. So whenever we have somebody with dark circles, we have to evaluate and see what exactly is the cause. And many a time and the thing is like the skin under the eye is very sensitive and it's a very thin skin. Okay. So whatever you use under the eye, no, it can lead to easy allergies and the thing and nowadays like so many things are being advocated for these dark circles and the sort and i do see a lot of people coming with use of potatoes use of this thing and that thing so that leads to allergies and irritations which can exacerbate dark okay. circles okay. and the other thing is like dark circles also occurs due to sluggish or decreased blood flow in the under region. Okay. So we have to take into account all these factors and then only we can treat the dark circle. Okay. So for some people, okay, a good sleep may help to elevate the dark circle. Or for some like, okay, if they're using the computer like for, a long, it, time. It, for okay. a long time, no, don't look in the computer screen continuously for a long time. They can avoid the grays like in between so that that kind of strain won't be there. Okay. Then the other thing is like, uh, Avoidance of stress is an important thing. So it's easily said, but it's very difficult to do. But like some kind of positive thinking and practicing yoga and these things, no, that okay. also helps to get in that positive thing and helps to get rid of the dark circles to an extent. Then the other thing is like some people like, okay, they have got the, like so many wrong habits, no. So that like, okay, having a proper like life, no, that is continuously watching the TV and the things and that also not in the proper posters so that only leads to eye strain okay. and if they find the eye strain is there get the eye like the okay. eye vision checked and correct it that okay. also can elevate it so 
never go for those proprietary preparations available in the market show it to a doctor I evaluate, find out what, what exactly is the is. cause okay. and then treat it because okay. otherwise it can lead to exacerbation of the problem okay. because nowadays so many cosmetics are available in the market and so many of them no, people tend to use them saying like okay that matches my color skin and the thing but they may be containing some of the heavy metals and the things which can actually stain the skin and lead to permanent color and the things. So. Be careful regarding whatever thing that you use, whether it is the cosmetic or the medicine or the thing. So okay. that is something. So good. what about aging, doctor? Does it uh, really aging. contribute to this? Yeah, aging. So like since we are discussing about the <laughs> youth, no, that's why like I didn't mention it. Definitely, age is a factor. So as age increases, you know the strain, everything tends to increase. So that tends to naturally increase plus okay. what happens is with aging the wrinkles under the eye also tends to increase so people tend to develop fine lines no? that okay. exacerbate that color uh, we'll move to the next question doctor okay. hi ma'am i'm rosemary doing my mba first sem i would like to know that is there any creams or treatment for scar scars is a very difficult thing to treat once you develop a scar you are bound to have it for a lifetime no cream is actually going to do any magic for scars okay. okay there are some creams which may work to a very little extent but if you're really bothered about scars you have to go for some procedural treatment so now there are treatments like there are lasers available then there are treatments like the derma roller and then there are specific peels called like silicone based peels okay. which we have to do for the scars and then depending on the scars sometimes the scars may be pigmented then the type of peel we do for it is different and the type of scar that is the scar which develops after pimple needs a okay. different kind of treatment the scar which you develop after a burn or something needs a different kind of treatment okay. so and the like the size of the scar is another thing sometimes you may have to go for scar revision surgeries if they are very large scars so if they are very small scars definitely we can do so many things for that and if they are depressed scars we need to go for some treatments like filler injections and the things to raise them up so okay. that's the thing okay uh, doctor you have talked about uh, laser treatment can you just explain more about it that is for the scars yes yeah that also depends as i told you know depending on the type of scar like in our case like in our, our like south india we have got a very sunny climate so there is a very rare chance of getting pigmentation like the derma roller treatment is actually a small instrument with needles it's a combination of the treatment and that depends on the type of scar as i told you so for that like depending on the type of scar we do it or sometimes if it's a pigmented scar we may go for something called q suture india glaze uh -huh. so that's okay uh, doctor uh, how about this how about the cost of this like that's again depending on how the big the scar, scar which is. area is okay. affected by the scar okay. depends on the number of sittings or the things that we have to do no because when you do a laser the number of shorts is the thing that matters okay. usually so, how many sittings they may need that also okay, depends, depends depends no because for each person in the treatment varies so definitely like it varies from person to person i cannot just say like okay with the this treatments machine, this is machine, going to improve okay. or something okay. like that okay. Is it a painful procedure, doctor? The thing is like definitely scar is a scar tissue, no? Okay. So when it is like a pain won't be painful. Okay. But the other treatments when we are going in definitely it is painful. So okay. what we do is like we give either local anesthetic creams or local anesthetic injections and then do the treatments. Doctor, we'll see the next question. Hi ma'am, I'm Shamina. I'm doing MBA from SNS College, Paru. And my question is that since birth, I have been facing a problem of very dry skin and I have been using lots of creams, lotions, medicines, etc. And there is no uh, complete relief from this. Is there any way that I can get completely rid of this? One of the common problems. Yeah, the thing is like, no, either we are born with a dry skin, oily skin, normal skin or a combination of skin. Okay. So it's something we are born with, we will die with it. No treatment can get rid of a dry skin completely mm -hmm. and no treatment can get rid of an oily skin. You have to be careful about the things that you use on the skin, the types of soap, the face wash, the creams, everything. So we can maintain the skin. That's it. Like it's only by maintaining we can carry on with it. We can okay. never completely cure it and get rid of the condition. The other thing is like commonly we have got a habit if you have a dry skin, 
like apply oil and then take a bath no water is the best moisturizing agent so if you are using oil before bath what happens is water doesn't enter the skin it just rolls away so you have to ideally use this moisturizing creams after the bath that is never after bathing don't completely wipe away the water okay. just dab the skin and apply the moisturizing cream so that it helps to retain the moisture okay so and the same way like plenty of moisturizing creams as she said no so go for a better ones which tend to last more so that is the only way they can maintain it no we cannot go for maybe later on we may find out some genetic therapy or something that can change uh, doctor in our market there are a lot of uh, soaps that is available for dry skins is does it really work the thing is like it's always better to go for liquid soaps than the baths no the liquid soaps are always more gentle so they don't take away the water and the okay. lipid from the skin so they tend to make the skin or retain the moisture whereas the other ones can be little more dry so i always advise them to go for the liquid ones than the bar ones and uh, what about the glycerin soaps doctor yeah glycerin soaps are also like good the same way better than the other bar soaps but better than them it's always better to go for the liquid soap like because it. always when they are in that bar consistency you know the ph and the things are a little different than when they are in the liquid thing so it's the other thing is always better it's really useful to use a cleansing uh, lotion after a bath that is for dry skin yes for dry skin for dry skin they don't need to use a cleansing Cleanses. lotion further because what happens when they use the cleansing lotion it further dries the skin okay. cleansing lotion or cleansers are good for the people with oily skin okay, so right. that that actually helps to remove the extra dirt and the things from there so doctor we have got a mail uh, i am ashwin 27 year old i want to know about double chin is there any treatment double chin is a problem like okay now everybody is facing the problem of obesity so when you tend to gain weight naturally you tend to get a double chin and sometimes in some families even without like any excess of weight or anything they tend to have double chin so like double chin actually we cannot apply any creams or anything even though they advocate so many oils and slimming oils and the thing it's not going to work for it so if you have a double chin you can think about treatments like mesotherapy in which some meso injection with phosphatidyl okay. choline is done that may help to reduce the fat but the result is not 100% guaranteed then you can even think of like lipolysis and then there is a technique called thread lift in which uh, threads made of polydioxinone after application of the local anesthetic cream and numbing the area the threads are inserted so that that helps to pull up the skin Clip so the, that like, yeah lift the skin that right? actually helps to get rid of the double chin to some extent okay. then there is something called a non surgical face lift with botox injections okay. so that also helps to define the jaw area helping to get rid of the double chin to some extent but if you want to get a real good improvement think about surgery that's a better option <laughs> okay uh, doctor we have got one more mail uh, it says uh, hi doctor i am from alapi i have heard about botox can you just explain more about it yeah botox is something like now everybody has heard a lot about botox and like then the thing is like it's something made from botulinum toxin then that gives you a fear like okay it's toxin it's going to do something like dangerous to your skin so the thing is like botox is actually a very diluted form of the botulinum toxin injection and previously like it was introduced for treatment of headache and the sore but now like it's used widely for the treatment of wrinkles and people have got a belief like okay it's used when you develop wrinkles and the folds but it has got so many other cosmetic uses also like you can define the shape of your jaw or if you have squarish face you can make it more oval and then you can change the way you smile that is if you have got a gummy smile that is the lips going up and exposing your gums then if you give botox injection at proper side you can actually decrease Reduce that it, and you. then you can even change the shape of the tip of the nose a little bit then change the shape of your eyebrows okay. so so many things can be done with okay. it and like previously it was thought okay once you develop the lines or wrinkles you go for the botox injection so it's something which helps to relax the muscle help thing to get away with the lines that is we have got so many muscles on our face and the face muscles are in the face skin and they tend to give us expressions or help us to smile make expressions so these lines develop as time goes by when we are continuously using these muscles they tend to leave lines okay. and initially these lines appear only when we show expressions then they are called the dynamic wrinkles and later on they 
tend to remain there even without expression okay. when we call them static wrinkles. Okay. So Botox is actually used in the treatment of these dynamic wrinkles. So it helps to relax the muscle which is giving rise to these lines. And it's always better start using this when you start developing the lines. So you can always have a natural appearance. Okay. At least once these lines are completely developed and then when you go for the injection you tend to look different totally. you tend to say like oh you look so different and the things okay. like that. and the previous concept was okay you start with the injection when you are 40 or something but now the thing is like you can start it even at early okay, okay so even in 20s also okay you can go for that you can go for it if you are developing the lens so that youthful appearance can be maintained okay does it need only one sitting or the thing is like no this uh, injection when it is given the effect lasts for around six to eight months mm -hmm. so if, if you want to maintain that effect, you then have again to, you have, yeah, to, you have to repeat it so doctor it was really an informative talk thank you so much thanks okay. so guys a little care and little time is all that what you need to have a glowing skin so write your problem to us our email id is youthdairyrosebowl at gmail.com see you next week till then bye bye